Has this ever happened to you? Get some help with your green thumb using this countdown timer to keep you updated. Keep watching to find out how on This Old Sub. Welcome to the second episode of This Old Sub. Engage audience member Istvan K has been kind enough to contribute his version of a smart door and a smart duct. We will go and showcase both of these in this episode before we tackle the gardening project. This episode could not have been produced without the support of viewers like you. First, we'll get some help. In order to completely rewire this, we will go ahead and have a team of people pull out all of the components. And then get them out of the way safely, because we will be flooding the room in order to test everything out. Now let's take a look at our components. To begin with, we will need not or relay and signal. We'll also need several wires. We will want two water detectors, depending on if your room already has water detectors, but we have experienced some problems using already installed detectors. Planting your own might fix that issue. And of course a motion detector, which every door by default is already equipped with. Everything left in this door is part of the default setting. So we take a look at the submarine door itself. It's attached to an and, which is already planted in the ceiling. Remember that none of the modifications we made are embedded in the submarine itself, just so that we can revise it if necessary. Same thing for the motion sensor up on top. We have delay component buried in the submarine on top and the knot component also buried above it. Okay, let's go ahead and start work on this. To begin with, we plan on installing the OR and signal check to make things simple, followed by the knot and the relay. Now we need some wire. We already have six, but we're gonna need a little more than that. We have a water detector here, and we will go ahead and use the basic ones first, just to show you what we've experienced with this on this old sub. Put the signal out, plant this in the ore. It can be in either signal one or signal two, either one is fine. For the time frame and output, those will be default. You can leave them alone, but for the false output, you need a zero. Additionally, your water detectors, if you leave them on standard, they'll be fine. Output is one, false output on zero. We'll check this one. It should say the exact same thing. I'll put a one, false output on zero. Let's go ahead and wire this signal out into the ore. Signal two. Next up, we'll take this and feed it into the signal check. It's going to be into the signal in. For the signal check, you will want to set in the target signal of one, and then the output and false output will be whatever colors you so desire. We'll go and do 255-00255. These are Istvan's colors for his scheme. For false output, this will be what the lights up as when nothing is going wrong. And the top one was when something is bad, this is what it shows. People like to have red be the bad color. And we have an issue with that, which we'll talk about later on. Now that signal check is set, we actually need to wire something else into it. We need to get signal out, then send that to the lighting itself for set color. This is everything is fine. We have a nice soft blue telling us that things are gravy. Let's review what we've just done. When the water detector detects something, any water, it will send a one to this ore component. As long as any one of these two things receive a signal from the water detector, it'll send something to the signal check component. If it receives a one, which is it's underwater, at any point from either one of those two water detectors, it's going to change the light to red. Otherwise, if nothing's really happening, then it's gonna leave the light as false output. Now we're gonna wire this OR component into the signal out, which has already been used, and then put it in signal in for not. And when it is not receiving a signal from the water detectors, it will now activate something in the not component. So we'll take the signal out of the not component and send it into the set state for the relay component. Remember, set state. Next up, we'll need to take the motion detectors state out and feed that into signal in one. Finally, we need to take signal out one and feed that into the door's set state. If everything goes well, your door should open and close automatically. Additionally, there will be a light source. Let's go ahead and put on a suit and start flooding the room and see how this engages. Remember that I have experienced issues using the default water detectors. So if you experience this similar issue, you may need to plant your own. 
see that the door is flickering like mad, and it went ahead and opened anyway, so let's go ahead and flood it a little bit more. And it's still opening. That didn't quite work out the way we wanted. Again, we, we know the reason for this, though we know how to fix it. The reason for it is a little bit confusing. So what we need to do is we need to plant new water detectors. And they can be anywhere. Just go ahead and pop one here. Another one here. Just next to the originals is fine. Then we'll need to take the wires. We'll take the red ones and just let them hang loose. Not worry too much about unfeeding them entirely. Take a new black wire. Actually not in this one. In the new one. Signal out. Feed into the ore. Black wire. Do the same with the newly planted water detector here. You can see it's also 1 and 0 just like before. And feed it into this ore over here. Alright, soft blue. Door opens and closes like normal. Now let's flood the room. You can see that it's now a solid red rather than a flashing one. Let's check to make sure whether the door opens or not when flooded. It does not. So if you also experience the same problem, try planting your own water detector instead. Finally, we also have the smart duck. Let's get to work on that. To begin with, we will need just a simple signal check component and a water detector. Of course, as always, you will want some wires. This is not enough wires to suit our needs, so let's just go ahead and grab a handful. We will be interfacing with this water detector. Here's the red one that we're ignoring for now, which leads to over there. Let's go ahead and pull that out for the time being. Blue one is standard on most subs, and will be feeding directly to the duct block beneath it. Others may be variants. You'll note that the green ones are the ones we have plugged in. We can just go ahead and safely extract those just for the time being so that you know that they are not interfering with the process here. This ore one does feed somewhere else in the sub, which I believe may have been standard as part of this orca. You may not have that on your duct block. The way that Istvan's duct detector works is that he places a water detector right underneath, and the goal of this is to prevent water from flooding up the duct. I'll show you how it normally works. So let's go ahead and carve up a hole in the floor here. You can see here that the duct is open and bubbles are going up. In fact, the water level of the room is indeed increasing and the only hole is this duct. The door is closed, that is not automatic right now, it's not interfacing in any way with the water, but this duct is open letting water through. And the reason why it's open is, is because this water detector knows that there's water in the room and its command is open the duct. That duct is actually flooding our room. Let's go ahead and flush out all this water. The way his duct locker works is that we will need a signal check. Let's go ahead and place it right under the water detector for the time being. And remember that the standard water detector is set up so that one is output and zero is false. Since we wish to actually reverse what the duct block does, we are going to change up just a couple things. For this water detector, we are going to turn it zero is output and one is false. This is important, if you forget this step, this will not function the way you wish. Now we'll take the signal out of the lower water detector and feed that into the signal check. This is actually going to go into the set output. Additionally, we're gonna take this cord here, and we're gonna disconnect the duct block. In fact, why don't we go ahead and just use this bright blue wire, take it out of the set state for the duct block, we we'll take that same bright blue wire, reconnect it to signal out, but this time we're going to feed that right into the signal check. We're going to put it as the signal in. Remember that we have just now pulled a wire out of the water detector and placed it in the signal in of the signal check. And before we send the information out of the signal check, we'll want the target signal to be one. We're going to go ahead and take a blue wire, 
signal out, plug that into the duct block, and we're going to have this do set state. Now let's try flooding the room. You note that the duct is not functioning at the moment, or in reality, it's actually functioning perfectly. What's going on is this duct is refusing to open because there's water underneath and it doesn't want to let more water in. Let's go and drain this water then. So we see what happens when the water's underneath. Does it function just fine if the water's on top? You can see that the duct is open and water is going down. Fantastic. Everything is working as expected. Now the issue that I had with red lights, with the default red cords running through the ship, it can actually be difficult to see red lights. Here's a default red light and it looks very similar to the red cords going through. It's hard to tell that that's actually on and doing anything. Here's a slightly different orange light and maybe it's a little easier to see. We're gonna try for a little brighter orange later. That is Istvan's Smart Door and Smart Duct. If you like what you saw, you can get your very own Smart Door and Smart Duct installed today. In today's hectic environment, it can be difficult to remember to always water your plants. What's a busy captain to do? Today's technology, we can solve this issue. First, we'll need a text display. We do need just a single button. As always, you'll also require wires whenever working with components. The components you will actually need will be an oscillator, and we'll take a handful of this. We'll need a subtract component, memory component, and a signal check component. The reason why we might take more than one is so that we can look and see what these components actually do, but I'll try my best to explain while going hands-on. Begin with, we'll go ahead and place the text display somewhere where we can see the numbers, place a button next to it, Let's go ahead and begin placing the components themselves. For the oscillator component, Pulse tells us that this will, every frequency, whatever that frequency number is, it'll send out a signal of 1. The frequency we'll be using is 1, but you could set something as every minute. Still, we want a frequency of 1, make sure it's set to that. For the purposes of all of our demonstrations, we will start with any of the output cords or pins first and then move our way to input. We're sending a signal from the oscillator component into the subtract component. It is important that you place this in signal in 2, not signal in 1. Additionally, though this is optional, go ahead and set your clamp min to 0. What this indicates is that you don't care about seeing negative numbers. If the timer has gone down to 0, it's done for for the plants. We'll take the signal out of the subtract component and feed that into the memory signal in. The value we're going to go ahead and leave by itself. So that is for the program to decide. Take the signal out of the memory component and feed that back into the subtract component. Signal in one. Then we're going to go ahead and back up to the signal check component. And we're going to program the target signal to one. This is important. As for the output and false output, leave the false output to zero. But for the output, set to whatever time you want the button press to configure. We're going to go ahead and configure this to 2889. Through our careful timing of a banana plant's lifespan, you may wish to have it a little earlier so that you don't necessarily arrive too late. Take the signal check signal out, send that into the memory components signal in. Take the button, feed that into the signal checks signal in. And if we want to see our miracle at work, we just need to place our subtract components signal out to the text display. Let's go ahead and hit the button. It's now 2887, 2886. You saw that it started at zero and didn't go any further. From here on, whenever this number starts to dwindle down, you know it's time to water them. When you're ready to restart the timer, tap the button on your way out, and you'll always be notified when it's time to water your plants again. Credit goes to Nero for programming the timer. And that was for dealing with friendly plants. Next time, I'll show you how to deal with unfriendly plants. We will be showing you how to install a safety mechanism for ballast flora that we have designed. If you have a way to set up a timer you'd like to share, let us know. Till next time, I'm Captain Tran for This Old Sub.